Hello, Tiger fans, and welcome to this week's edition of the Tiger Women's Basketball Report. As always, I'm your host, Ben Rosenbaum, and joined by the head coach of the Tigers, Laura Harper. Coach, welcome back. A, Thank you. A shorter week for you this past week, only, only playing Delaware here at home. Uh, another gritty win over Blue Hens, the first one out, another tough win, but uh, coming away with it 67-65. And, I mean, the first thing that jumps out is the free throw shooting. 18 of 18 from the line for the Tigers. Huge, four huge ones down the stretch from Quinn and Kylie to cement the win. Uh, let's talk about the foul shooting first before we get into the actual game. You had to be really happy with that. Definitely thrilled that we were able to, you know, just sink them when we needed to. And I think it says volumes because I remember missing 10 at their place. And we've been shooting them at nauseam, if you ask them, <laughs> daily in practice. But at this time of the year, free throws are what make or break teams. Yeah, Kylie said it in the press, press conference. She said, felt like all we did in practice week was shoot foul shots. <laughs> uh, and they came in huge. Um, and, and you said it, you needed all 18 of those because it was a, it was a tight game. You jumped out. Delaware battles back. Uh, let's talk about the resilience of your team and, and how they withstand kind of wave after wave of a Delaware run. We knew it was going to be a battle versus Delaware. It's, I think it's always going to be one of those big emotional physical games. So, you know, trying to just allow them to settle into the game and, you know, respond to Delaware's runs and just make runs of our own. So my goals always try to stay as composed as possible, specifically down the stretch for them. And I think they really follow that energy. Uh, in the second quarter. Kylie, Sky, Quinn all pick up their second foul. They have to sit. We've had times before where Kylie gets her second or Sky gets her second. You've never lost all three of them to, in my memory that early in the game. So you, you really had to rely on Taye and Ryan and Lex and Pat, and, and they answered the bell. They, they came right back swinging. Nothing dropped off uh, when you had to go to the bench for that. For sure. It's something that we always talk about, our depth, and just how we are truly a team when you talk about balance and scoring and efforts, and that is – actually what strengthens us so it was one of those I speak it all the time maybe that was that moment where we were able to show that we are deeper than just our starting five the rebounding battle Delaware was leading for most of it on the glass and it was showing because they were they were battling back uh, and then I didn't realize it until the end but it did seem like down the stretch Towson's grabbing more and more boards Towson's getting those long rebounds and you end up winning on the glass 43 41 and we know you you love the rebounding and that was that was probably case in point for you like you win on the board you're gonna win this game and down in in clutch time it came it was true you came through Absolutely. I tell them all the time. The one thing you can control is your resilience and just your efforts on the boards. And it's funny because Quinn starts the game, it's two box outs, sit down. You know, and she knows that. We cannot win games if she doesn't box out for us. And we have to just value controlling possessions. In the fourth quarter, uh, neither team shot particularly well. I think you shot 20% from the floor. Ta uh, Delaware just hit four shots from the floor, 22%. Um, defense wins games at the end of the day, and uh, we've seen this from your defense time and time again, that they can really step up when needed. They can really limit teams. And uh, Is it all kind of starting to come together now at this point in the year where they know they can really shut a team out when they need to? I would like to think and hope so. <laughs> I can say at this point in the year, we are putting a premium and an emphasis on defending and rebounding to the point where we spend all day, I want to say it's typically Wednesdays when we play on Fridays, solely on defense and getting stops and, you know, the next opponent's sets. And it's just something that they have to figure that out. And I don't know if I was putting as much of an emphasis on it earlier in the year. So it's exciting that they're able to, to battle and, and be resilient through that. So you sweep Delaware in your first year. It's, it's the rivals, the big one you always want to win, no matter the sport here at Towson, you want to beat <laughs> Delaware, and you get to sweep. Um, it's also the team that ended the season last year. I know you obviously weren't here last year, but uh, what does it mean for the, for the team and, and for you to come in and, and get those two wins, tough wins, in, in a rivalry series? You know, when you think about the whole story of the season, I think that is something that means everything, especially just how the season ended last year, how much we're compared to Delaware all the time. Now, personally, I feel as though I prepare for every game the same, <laughs> but I also know the emotion that goes into that game. So I think that it's great for our team. I think the biggest thing is now moving forward that that is over now, you know, and we may see them again. And <laughs> 
So I think just enjoy it, realize that it's possible, realize that every single game is going to be a battle with them, but celebrate for our 24 hours and move on. All right, so we will move on now. <laughs> Good timing. Uh, you're taking on two teams this week that are desperate for wins inside the conference, uh, starting off with Hofstra on Friday, February 9th at 7. Going back up to the island, first trip up there, going to Stony Brook wasn't super kind to you and your team. Uh, taking on a Hofstra team, eight and thirteen, two and eight overall in the conference, or two and eight in the conference. Um, they're deceiving though. They've had some tough games. If you look at their schedule, they've had some close losses. This is a team that they're hungry for a win. They have good scores. They have good players. Do you have to, you know, remind the team? Don't look at the record. Don't look at what we've done. You have to be ready for everybody. And it's been proven throughout this conference this year that anyone can beat anybody any night. Absolutely. You know, I think I have a lot of respect for Santos up there um, at the helm of Hofstra. And ultimately, every game is the most important game for us. So we technically should not be looking at records. We should be looking at how they play. They've got 6'3", six, 6'1", six, you know, really dominant forwards this game. You know, their leading scorer, number 15, is a forward. And that's an area sometimes defensively that we actually struggle in. So from a matchup perspective, this will be a challenge for us, but confident that we'll, ab we'll be able to just match them and hopefully exceed their energy and their effort as well. Yeah, you mentioned uh, Brandy Thomas averaging close to a double-double a game, I think just one or two rebounds shy of it. Um, you mentioned struggling against talented forwards. How do you approach her then? How do you try to throw stuff at her to slow her down? You know, similarly to how teams scheme against Kylie, I think it's just knowing how good she is. I think she made three threes the last game she has. She's a three-level scorer um, at all levels. And just having the magnitude to know this is who they're going to every single time. And they've got some shooters around, but just having a pure emphasis on her. When you look at Hofstra's stats, nothing jumps out that's, that you can point to that says, that's why they're losing games. They're, they're getting crushed on the boards. They turn the ball over. Uh, there's nothing that jumps out at you. So they're, they're going to play teams tough, and it, their schedule shows that. Coming off these, this gritty Delaware win where it was a tough fight, does that help prepare for a team that's going to probably be scrapping for their, for, to just pick up their third CAA win? Well, honestly, you know, Hoffa's going to press us the whole game. So I do think the pressure and the turnovers that we endured versus Delaware was a point of emphasis moving into this week as far as handling traps and pressure and advancing the ball. So I do feel as though Delaware helped us there. But ultimately, we have to be focused and realize how important with eight games remaining in conference that every single game is, regardless of opponent, regardless of record. You know, I think that's... The challenge for 18 and 22, 23-year-olds of realizing where we are in the season right now. And then after UNCW, uh, or excuse me, after Hofstra, come back home, UNCW on Sunday. It's, it's that Friday-Sunday travel. But this must be a little bit better, though, because you're not going to another you know, hotel. You're, going, you're coming home. Does that make that trip a little bit easier, that swing, the Friday-Sunday swing? Absolutely, and ultimately this is a Thursday, Sunday for us, sure. so it helps us a little because we'll get back 2.30 in the morning on Friday. They will be in classes on Friday, um, contrary to their beliefs, they will be in class, um, and it just gives us another couple of days to prepare for UNCW. Uh, and I know you're focused on Hofstra right now, UNCW, 4-17, and 1-9 and nine in the conference. Uh, again, just, just looking for a win. Um, they have a two-headed scoring monster. They can go either way. They lost uh, McMillan early in the year. Uh, thoughts when... Thoughts when you look at the Seahawks and what they present? Well, I know Carrie grows very well. I know she's from the area. I know what she's capable of. And I think there's another guard I haven't watched film that um, does some damage for them as well. So, again, ultimately it's another game that we have to prepare for. And, you know, any team that's hungry, um, they're not going to just fold. Now, at this point, with us being where we are, every team wants to beat us. And we're going to get every team's best effort. And it'll be, you know, our job as a staff to make sure our team's ready to play. All right, the Tigers playing two this week. First on the road at Hofstra, February 9th at 7 o'clock. Then back home here on Sunday on, uh, at 1 o'clock inside CQ Arena. We'll have that game for you on Flow Sports. For the head coach, oh, before we go, Super Bowl pick? Is that even a question? I mean, my birds are going to do it. I'm from Philly, a Philly fan. It's Eagles all the way. Jalen Hurts is ready. Let's go. There you go. Kick off your Super Bowl Sunday here inside CQ at 1 o'clock with Towson Women's Basketball. For Laura Harper, I'm Ben Rosenbaum. Thanks for joining us. And as always, go Tigers. Go Tigers.